so responding to some questions that I've been given on YouTube, and someone had asked me what state requirements were and how to get licensed as a funeral director. And so I thought I would just give some of that information and um, go from there. So each state uh, in the U.S. has its own requirements and its own um, legal oversight overseeing as to what you need to be a licensed funeral director. Um, some states it's a dual license, like in Michigan you get one license to be an embalmer and a funeral director. In other states, it's a separate license. You can choose to just be a funeral director or just be an embalmer. Um, Colorado is the only state that does not require you to have a license to be a funeral director. Um, you can direct funerals and, and um, handle that side of the business without any kind of licensing. But a lot of directors do um, go for the training at a mortuary school so that they can also be um, kind of versatile within the funeral home. So after um, all your schooling, which I'll touch on, there's kind of the testing and everything that regulates. There's a national board, which you take, and it's broken into two categories. It's arts and sciences. So you have two sections that you have to pass in order to receive your national certification. And then each state has a board test that you also have to take. Um, it's typically like a 50 or 100 question um, seated test and I believe now they're online back when I did it which makes me feel super old to say that. You know I sat in a classroom with pen and paper or pencil and paper and, and took the test and waited a couple weeks to hear if you passed or not and I'm guessing that you can probably now do it right on a computer and find out, you know, right away whether you passed it, um, which would have been nice at the time rather than that waiting game of, did you get your letter in the mail? Did you get your letter? And waiting to find out if, if you passed or not. Um, a lot of tests also have continuing education hours. Um, some do not, but some do require you to do uh, continuing ed throughout the year and over a certain period of time you have to get so many credit points. Um, towards your licensure just to show that you're keeping up with the trends, um, learning more information and, and growing rather than just sticking with that same set of information you learned back when you went to school. Um, so most states require that you have a high school diploma and that you're 18 years old to begin the mortuary school program. Uh, some mortuary schools offer the prerequisite classes. Um, some students will just go to like a community college for two years to get the required classes that are needed. So there's a set of classes. Uh, it's, it's, a lot of the states require the same types of classes. The number of hours within each category might be different, but there's uh, different categories that you do have to get classes in before you can start the mortuary school program. But some mortuary schools have a pre-mort program that you can do and they will give you just that specific information, those specific classes that you need. Now the only thing is that, say you go to school in Ohio, you have to make sure that you're getting the prerequisite classes that Illinois, if you live in Illinois, requires for their mortuary um, license. Because as part of your apprenticeship and everything, you have to do those classes, you have to get your um, degree from the mortuary school, but you have to have this specific type of classes to be able to get that license in the end in your state. So you have to make sure that they all match up. So um, prereq classes, kind of an overview, there's psych, math, English composition, so writing, you know, making sure that you know your, your grammar and your punctuation is as good as you can. Um, or the best that you can, talking about grammar. Um, social science, public speaking, which was actually my favorite class I took uh, back in college. We did such awesome just training things within class and um, did like speak offs and having to argue against the position you actually stood on, which really made me understand um, different viewpoints on things. It was really an interesting class. I loved it. Um, counseling, business, 
computer science, which may not be as prevalent now because so many people have computer skills going in, but you would be surprised that people that um, maybe haven't had the exposure to computers, maybe they don't have a computer in their home, maybe they don't have a computer at school. Um, you know, there's still a lot of, of schools and, and families that maybe can't afford or, or can't have those, those things readily available for students. And so um, computer science class that just goes over some general um, things helps you maybe learn a, a funeral related program that you wouldn't have encountered outside of working in the funeral business. Um, so then you go to mortuary school and you apply just like any college and you go to mortuary school. Typically it's a one year or five uh, quarters schooling. It depends on if you're going for your associates or your bachelors. Some mortuary schools offer a bachelor program and I, my personal thought, why wouldn't you stay one extra quarter to get a bachelor's degree? It may not make a huge difference in the mortuary field, but you might just, just have that extra degree just to have it for one quarter of uh, schooling. It's, it's kind of a no-brainer to me, but I'm sure other people feel differently. Um, and so mortuary school is, is really rigorous in a lot of ways um, because you're compacting a lot of different um, areas of knowledge into a short period of time. So you've got anatomy and accounting and restorative art, uh, management, chemistry, psychology, business, uh, mortuary law, and then there's lab work on top of it. So you do um, a lab where you learn about embalming in the classroom, but then you're also going to do some hands-on in different groups and um, everything. So you're going to have a lot of areas where you are spread thin over a lot of different information. I think mortuary science is an area where you're not really um, specializing in one item. You're kind of a master, not even a master, but you're, um, you're experienced at so many different areas. I, and that's one of the things I love about the business is because you're a chemist one minute and you're a uh, you know, math person the next minute, accountants, and you're a counselor, you're, you're kind of all over the place, filling all these different vocational um, niches or niches um, within your day. And so you're kind of, your brain's never one focused item, you know, on one item, you're kind of all over the place, which is awesome. So, um, so you do your mortuary degree and you go through all that schooling and um, you get your your degree and typically you have to have a certain level of a GPA you have to have a certain number of school hours in in order to um, be qualified to take the, the boards and to take your state tests and to go into your apprenticeship now your apprenticeship portion of it most states require you cannot do your apprenticeship until after you've done your schooling some do allow you to do it beforehand. Um, it just depends on the state and the regulations. And I know some of them, even since I was doing mine, have changed their, their laws and changed what they require. Um, it's typically a one-year program. And during that year, you have to turn in um, reports twice, usually every six months. Some of them require every three months. Um, the forms for each state all look a little different. but um, you have to have so many uh, required things in different categories. So you have to cosmetize so many bodies. You have to embalm so many bodies. You have to write so many obituaries, call so many um, veterans groups. There's just a huge list that you have to do all these requirements in. But every state is going to be different. So um, typically if you get on your state website, you know, Google Mortuary Science License New Mexico or whatever state you may be in and you're going to find your New Mexico mortuary science licensing department and there should be forms and everything for you to print off on there. Typically you can print off your application, you can print off your requirements, you can even see, you know, they should have a list of uh, classes that you have to take and how to apply for all these different areas. So 
And then um, with your apprenticeship, you have to get linked up to a funeral home. So if you haven't done it at that point, then you have to apply and um, you know submit your resume to funeral homes to be an apprentice if you don't already have a connection to a funeral home. And typically, your sponsor uh, who oversees the apprentice has to be licensed so many years, three or five or whatever your state requires years for them to be able to be your sponsor. And they kind of oversee everything you, not kind of, they do oversee everything you do. They have to sign off on all your paperwork um, and they are the responsible person for you and what you're doing. Um, my path, I went from high school to a private college and I got a psychology degree. And it was at college that I decided to go into the funeral business. So I did my apprenticeship while I was in that first college. And I only had to do six months because I was getting my... So in if you had your bachelor's degree, which I was going to have at the time of this happening, uh, you only had to do six months of an apprenticeship and you could do it before school. So when I went to school, I had already done my apprenticeship. I just needed to do the schooling, get my license. And because I had four years of college going in, I placed out of some of my classes because I had already had three chemistry classes and all these other classes. So I um, was able to place out of a few items that I had already taken enough credit hours in in college previous. And so I did the five quarters and I got my bachelor's degree. So I have two bachelor's degree, one in psychology and one in mortuary science. I can't say that you know having bachelor's degrees has helped me in this business in any way um, in terms of gotten me further or gotten me a specific job. Um, but I like to have that, I guess, paper fact that I put in the schooling, I put in that work for that part of my life. So, um, and it was really interesting going to mortuary school because of the experience range of everybody there. Um, you had, you know, me who had already done my apprenticeship. I'd been around the funeral business for, at that point, you know, five years, six years. Um, so I'd seen um, a lot of different things. I'd encountered a lot of different things, but there were also funeral director children that were there, you know, going to take over the business, who'd been around the business their whole lives, who'd been embalming with their parents since they were who knows how old. Um, so they had so much experience as well. But then you also had the people who had never seen a body before. They had never been to a funeral. They had never had any exposure to the funeral industry whatsoever. And I always wonder, you know, why are these people here? And a lot of people will say, you know, they it's a short schooling, and so they wanted something that they didn't have to go to school for for a long time, so that's why they landed there. Or they saw the Cadillacs and the shiny, you know, the black cars, and it looked like a lucrative business, and so they thought, oh, it's only a year schooling, and I'll get in there, and I'm going to start making so much money, and, you know, it seemed easy. And um, so that's why some people ended up there, and it was... It was so fascinating, the, the wide range of reasons people were there, how they got there, their path. Um, so that fascinated me. But um, yeah, so and I think that first quarter of schooling was really rigorous and it was to kind of weed out some of the people that, you know, didn't belong just because they weren't, um, they weren't ready for the, the body work and they weren't ready for um, some of what it entailed. And it just wasn't um, wasn't their cup of tea kind of thing. And so um, about a quarter of the class left after the first quarter. I would say another few left um, after the second quarter. So I, want, I think we graduated about a little over half of what started in our class. Um, and it's pretty common um, that you, you lose a lot through the process just because um, maybe you don't know quite what those hours are going to be when you're a funeral director and the on-call 24-7 and going out at 2 a.m. Um, is something you don't know until you start schooling and you really learn more about the behind the scenes of a funeral home. So uh, hopefully this answered. If you have any specific questions about any parts of this, by all means let me know. Um, Love answering questions for you guys and talk to you soon.